Sarah. I remember you. When was the, when did Making the Band come out? Oh my gosh, Making the Band, 1921. No, I'm just no. playing. No, 2002 and through 2004. So we had like the two year span and everything. But yeah, 2002. So that's when the world was introduced to you and your beautiful voice. And I remember you on the show. You know, you had this really beautiful voice. You were seem a little not meek, but just you know in your shell and you know dealing with your own set of personal dilemmas and drama (laughs) well I mean for one this was always my dream since I was five years old to be able to sing professionally and especially being with somebody like Diddy so that right there was a lot of like pressure because he's such a perfectionist and so am I so you always had to be on point with him and then you got all these cameras in your face 24 7 even when you're sleeping they got the cameras on you you know so and then gelling with everybody You know, it's like everyone comes from different, you know, backgrounds, genres, and I just wanted to make sure, you know, I had my stuff in the band as well. You know, like I didn't want to just be overshadowed, even though I was the only singer. So, yeah, it was pretty hard. I mean, it was it was definitely a challenge, but I would do it a thousand times all over again. Even walk to Brooklyn for cheesecake. I would do that again, too. Girl, that Brooklyn from cheesecake, and I'm thinking it's cold outside now. I hope that wasn't the weather when y'all was walking in New York. I, honestly, it was freezing, especially when we went over the, the Manhattan, the Brooklyn Bridge. Uh uh-uh. uh, <laughs> uh uh-uh. uh. Knees was tore up, feet was like I couldn't feel my toes, and hands was frozen on top of the cheesecake. Like for real, it was an eight-hour walk, fast there and back. I've never done like I don't know. I felt like I was running a marathon, walking a marathon, something, but. It well, did, stop me. did you understand the lesson behind that? Because I still to this day, I mean, I, I think I got it, Diddy. I'm not sure. Don't please don't make me walk. Oh, Jesus. Well, I mean, I just felt like it was kind of the hazing process where he worked really hard to get to where he's at. So I felt like he wanted to give us a little bit of hard work just so that we appreciate it when he decided, you know, to let us move into the house and you get all these perks and everything from you know, doing your thing in the limelight and being famous. But so I, I feel like he was trying to make sure we had that hard time. But I had three children. So I had already had the hard times and being busy and, you know, just never ending. You know, so I was kind of like, dang, Diddy, I, I already know how it is to put in work, you know, because I still had to beat out 70,000 people. Some of them didn't have kids, you know, and to be the only singer in the band. That's some hard work being on point with three children, trying to get your body back and everything. Because he did give you a hard time about that, too, just staying in shape and, and, you know, and then sometimes you couldn't make it or you wanted to be there for your kids. And he was kind of like, yeah, we need to get in the studio. Right. Well, that's what is kind of a down when it comes to the music industry. I mean, you can't really be with your family all the time. So and then you're always in different states. And, you know, I miss birthdays. It was just a lot of missing out on them being so small because they were like what five and six and then Eva the Diva was three so they were you know super young and and that was hard for me to be there with them every single day to not being there for months and they would be taller when I got back so I used to be like come on now so that was you know something that had me depressed you know but then also I was like well you still got your chance to live your dream even though you had your children first husband had my back appreciate that but you know like I said I would do it all over again and it made me a stronger person because I know what to expect in the business, but now all my children are all grown now, so they can rock, they can roll with their mama, yeah, you know. So after making the band, um, you know, things went for everyone in a different direction, and I, you know, remember um, seeing some things that I was I was di- disappointed because I'm like, you know, Sarah seems to be going through a hard time. What what happened there? Because that now catapults into what you're doing with Centric. Mm-hmm. Well, what happened, you know, like I said, missing the family, that, to, that got to me. And i um, always been a hard worker, though. No matter what Diddy asked me to do, I, I did it. You know, so it was just, I don't know what the heck. I guess he got tired of us. And, you know, some of, some of them didn't want to come back. And then it was just too many personalities and six of us. So he probably just was like, man, I can't deal with this. Y'all driving me crazy. So he kept Ness and Babs. But, you know, maybe it was God. He let me go. And so my story, my journey is what I'm doing now. Mm-hmm. So so you're doing centric from the bottom up um, and they talk. You're putting everything out there. Um, n- nothing's a secret anymore. Uh, you know, I, and, and correct me if I'm wrong. I, I know that you went through some legal issues as well, too. So is that discussed on the show as well or 
No, it wasn't really any legal issues. Um, with BET, I love BET. You know, I've been on the BET station forever, you know, but the whole point is I decided to stand up for myself because a lot of times if you just let things ride, then it seems like everybody thinks they can take advantage of you. So there was just a cer certain things that I didn't like that was portrayed, like me say saying I'm a, I'm a man beater slash singer. It was some, some really kind of not good tabloid things that was put out. So I was like, no, that is not one of my titles as a job, you know. So those things I just wanted to talk to them about, you know. So we got all that squared away. Everything is good. But as far as uh, from the bottom up, yeah, I'm being transparent because I feel like it's just time. You know, sometimes things in your past affect your future and you don't even know what what the heck is wrong with your butt. You know, so I just felt like there's deeper rooted issues that I needed to take care of. And I felt like if there's people out there that are going through what I went through, you know, I wish I had somebody to, to hold my hand and tell me it was going to be OK and protect me. So I decided to be the voice and let them know, hey, you're not alone. I went through the same thing and I'm speaking up and I'll be the voice for y'all if you have if you don't have one so on the show what do we see from you i mean because i i know you get a little bit vulnerable you know um a lot of ladies you have there for support which is really nice but um i'm hoping the show is also you know you guys are doing maybe counseling or some kumbaya sessions and really getting down to the nitty-gritty so what were some of the things that you have learned about yourself or uh, tackled what sort of issues have you you know come and said ah, I've had a moment that's that that might be something that I'm dealing with or I need to fix well it was the counseling like they showed me having a counseling session and actually saying who molested me not just my mother's boyfriend but my own father so that was like a double whammy for me as being a child and having that in your mind and it's like a piece of you is gone so I was just always into my work being a perfectionist to try to hide you know, and push that to the side, you know, but then the older I got, it just wasn't no hiding no more, you know. So that's what I, I'm saying on the show. And it was hard for me to even tell it. I was really hesitant because I just didn't know how my family would feel, you know, which you revealed that on the show. I did. I, did. I revealed that on the show. And well, the show is over now. Um, you, you could catch it on demand on centric. Um, it was some real deep stuff for me, but I'm finding clarity in my life. And um, I just know that a lot of those things can affect not just your, you, but your family as well. And I, I know that was a lot of the issues that I was going through with my husband, and he didn't understand where I was coming from. So now the counseling thing comes in, and now everybody's like, oh, so that's why, you know. So it was just my, my kids are supportive. They're like, mom, get some healing. And there's, there are children out there, like, ready to kill themselves or feel like they can't speak up. So that's why I'm doing this. It's not for, oh, I want attention and boo-hoo me. No, I want, some, I want some healing in my life. But it's also for them out there, you know, to let them know I'm not, I'm not perfect and it's not your fault. You know, a lot of them think that it's your fault because I thought it was my fault. I felt like I should have did things differently. But I'm a child at that time. So, you know. How was the family, you know, once they saw what happened uh, and they, they, it was revealed on the show? Because they're watching it just like how, you know, the rest of the America, America's watching it. So did they feel any kind of way? Did they say, oh, you know, we don't believe her? I mean. Well, not all my family, once again, was happy about me putting it out there for the, for the whole world to see. They were like, well, why couldn't you get counseling and keep it to yourself? But I'm like, well, wait a minute, you know, a lot of this, when I did say what happened to me, it was like, oh, you're lying or it couldn't possibly have happened. You're get, you're putting the other man that did molest you, your, your father in that that position. I'm like, what are you saying? I know who the heck did what to me. You know, so a lot of my family members weren't happy. But right now, I, I don't care. I don't care. You know, I love them, but I have to be healthy and happy for me. And if that's how I can get my healing and I, my purpose is that, then, hey. I have to do it. But, you know, I had, you know, Christine Beatty there for me big time. I mean, she was like big sis for sure. Nikki Gilbert, the producer of the show, Lucia, Ash, all of them were there for me. So, you know, Kimberly Smedley, any, I mean, all the cast. And that's what made it even better for me to be able to reveal this is that I had so much support and love. And they were like, girl, please, we'll come to Detroit, Port Huron, and we'll talk to your family with you. If you, you know, we got your back. So, I mean, it was just meant, you know, it was just time. 
anything that you've learned along the way i mean sometimes when people go through such traumatic experiences like that you realize that people that aren't your family are sometimes there for you better than your own family and you don't know if that has to do with a deep-rooted you know jealousy because they've made it or you've made it and they still and you know live in hard times who knows but has there been any life lessons that you've learned or you wanted to share to other people that might be going through the same thing and don't have support from their family well i just say always tell the truth and no matter what if somebody's not believing you you keep screaming it you keep voicing your what's going on with you and sometimes you got to put that family junk to the side because if not you're going to be the one suffering in silence and ending up doing things to hurt yourself later on you know and not knowing that this stuff damages i mean you can be promiscuous you want to kill yourself you know you you drown yourself with alcohol drugs or whatever and you just kind of don't value yourself anymore but it's not your fault and i want to let everybody out there these young girls know and even these older women that have never told and i've got so much support people inboxing me like you just don't even know what you've done for me you know i never told anybody but just to see a celebrity you know somebody that isn't it's being transparent basically telling their story i'm like oh my god i'm not alone you know god bless you 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 helped me so much so that right there is all worth it you know, and that's why I feel like it, me telling it wasn't in vain. So please make sure you and family members, if your child is saying some stuff, please look into that because they ain't going to be saying it for nothing. Seriously. <laughs> something is peace. No? Yeah. But you've also, also been working outside of, you know, revealing some of the, the things that you've gone through. You've also put that energy into your work. And uh, I heard you have a new single out. Yes, I have a new single, Fragile Heart. It's available on iTunes and everywhere else, you guys. This is one of those songs that come from my soul. You know, big up to Eric Campbell. He listened to me on the phone a thousand hours and helped and basically pinned it. You know, my life in one song. And then uh, James Worthy produced the track. So this right here, you guys, is one of those, wow, fragile heart. I'm, I'm like harder on the outside. Don't want to let nobody see me cry on the inside fragile and dying you know so this is one of those joints that everyone needs to get and i have another single out called sneak peek and i have well babs is on there too so it's, a, it's one of them club joints if y'all want to hear no sad stuff y'all can go to the club joint sneak peek which is available on itunes as well and get your little dance on oh, i didn't know you still talk to babs y'all are still cool oh my gosh yes i mean they're gonna always be family we went through some stuff yeah. you know in two years living together, crying together, fighting, all that, you know, but then gelling and coming together, getting a platinum album. We did our thing, you know, Dave Chappelle's show, just had a lot of great moments yeah. and we experienced it all together. So they're always gonna be family. I talked to all of them. Do you? Okay, that's good. Cause I always wonder what, like Dylon, he was, you know. Dylon, all right. <laughs> Dylan Dillager. Yes. Man, that's my boy. I love Dylan. All of a sudden on social media, he started resurrecting. I don't know. And some right. memes. I don't know if you caught that. Yeah. That yeah. Man, that Dave Chappelle junk where I spit hot fire. Yeah. All of that. Like people, they, they don't forget stuff like that. So matter of fact, I just had a lot of stuff on, on social media now talking about that Dave Chappelle skit. Yeah. It was so fun. Yeah. He, Dave Chappelle is a fool. Yeah. He is a fool. Playing Diddy on big old lips talking about. I mean, take that, take that, breast milk. I'm like, what the heck? But it was fun. It was fun. Yeah, it seemed like some really good fun times. And I wish you guys were still rocking together. But I'm glad to hear Babs is going to be on any other members you might be working on some music with. No, you never know. I mean, I could call him up right now and be like, send me a track. Let's get this. You know, but I really think that we would do great if we all got back together. Because people always inboxing me about that too where y'all at y'all should get back together have a reunion man i'm going i'm telling you everybody be there because that show was like the realest show it started all the the reality shows today but ours was 100 percent real there wasn't no faking no lines no nothing we was really for real crazy so it wasn't scripted no scripts <laughs> no scripts this was genuine <laughs> now is from the bottom up scripted or at it oh no it's a docuseries of five women that have been at the top but had some falls and went to the bottom and lost family, their job or whatever the case and have to rebuild their lives again. So all this is real, you know, real life circumstances and trying to get your life back together. So that's why I love this show. And what what's the deal? Because I, I don't like to see sometimes the women amongst each other are now creating this more of a like intense dynamic, you know, um, 
you know, is there going to be some kumbaya moments, some healing, some sisterhood? Because I see there's, you know, some separation. Well, it's going to be a lot of everything except for fighting, as in like pulling weaves out and throwing dang on shot glasses. Everything from fighting. That's as, that's as close as we that. We're not doing that. So this is some real life. We grown. And we didn't, you know, we ain't doing all that old young fighting in the club stuff. Oh, you got my man up in here. No, we ain't doing none of that. It's real life circumstances and we're trying to build our lives. So we own some real sexy junk, you know, some grown stuff. So, but yeah, it's already done airing and all that. So you have to go on demand for that. But there's two seasons and it's just worth it to watch. So season two's out already? I thought it premiered soon. No, no, we already finished season two. So like I said, y'all can go on demand and take a look at it. But, you know, it, which is weird because the last episode was just Saturday. So I was like, wow, it's over. All this, you know, counseling and revealing the deepest moments of my life that was just, oh, my God. You know, also being re getting remarried, well, renewing my vows with my husband. We've been married for 20 years. So that right there was a plus. I mean, it was in the Bahamas. Beautiful setting. I mean, it was just amazing how God can turn everything around that you thought was failure. He turned it around for your good. So that's what I'm, I'm loving that the shows on From the Bottom Up. Do you guys film in L.A.? or you, Where do you film? We actually filmed everywhere. They came to Michigan because I'm from Port Huron. And um, they also filmed in Atlanta. Most of it was Atlanta because that's where all the other ladies reside. So I had to come out there. But um, they, they followed me to L.A. because I have my own radio show through Playboy as well. And it's called The Biggest Talent. And, you know, I have a book that's coming out, Beauty Secrets. I mean, I'm all about the skin. I have my aesthetics degree. So when and got my little license and stuff, okay. you know, so there's a lot. I mean, also, um, Nikki Gilbert and Lucia Ash, they're um, doing my documentary right now of my journey of everything that's going on because my father ended up being um, arrested. After your man, after it was aired, after it aired, a week before me saying that he's the one that actually molested me, he gets arrested for molesting another child. So all this time that people were saying that I was lying and oh no, it couldn't possibly be him, he ends up doing this again. But it was some, it was like six years before that when he had did it. Now the girl decided to tell. Wow. Is the, is the girl that's not a family member? You're just somebody in the neighborhood. Yeah, no, no family member, but it still, it felt like it happened to me all over again because I know her, you know, so that was just really sad to me. And then my father could end up going to jail for life. So that's another thing that I'm sad about because I still do love my father, you know. I was going to ask you, yeah, what's the relationship? Oh, it's, it's hard. I mean, it's like, it's, you, it's like a no win type of situation, even though I feel like I'm getting some vindication as in Sarah, you was telling the truth and, you know, but it's just hard to see that he's there in jail and he might be there for the rest of his life. Now that is just, oh my God. And then my sister and, and my other, you know, my family feeling like, dang, I felt like I lost a dad. Like, he's gone. Do you uh, think that you could ever, or will he ever admit to what he did to you? Well, and that's another reason why I decided to tell my, my story is because I kept dealing with it all the time throughout my whole life. 27 years I've been dealing with him saying he never did it so I don't know if he'll ever come clean with it but that I, I don't really care at this point because it's just time for me to move on and live my life and like I said be that voice for these other young girls out there and, and grown women that are going through it now are you going to do a season three with uh from the bottom up I'm hoping that would be sweet to see where everything is you know another year later mm -hmm. I feel that 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 would be really cool do you have a music video out for uh, Fragile Heart? No, but we're in the process of, of getting ready to do that as well. So there's a lot of good stuff that y'all going to see Sarah Stokes do. Yeah. Well, it's great seeing you, you know, definitely in really high spirits and, and going for yours, you know, because I know when you guys were doing uh, uh, making the band on MTV, I always thought like, God, you guys were here. And then to not do tours and not be in that space you know and I know that's been your passion for a very long time it's like you get your dream and then pull from you that would just I don't know I girl I don't know yeah that was really that's hard you know but thank god I did have my children you know so that was I could focus on them for a lot and then I went back to school and got my my uh, aesthetics license 
So I decided, you know, keep keep it moving and, and do other things. But it's still crazy how I watch the tapes. I go back and I'm looking like, dang, people were like running after us, beating on the dang windows. We were in some building, you know, trying to run after the cars. I throw I sign an autograph, throw the pen out the window and they fighting for the pen. I'm like, what the heck is going on? It was really crazy. But, you know, and then all of a sudden, boom. Everybody looking like, huh? It's like a shock. Like, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, yeah, it was. And I think that was hard for a lot of us. Well, all of us, I believe, you know, because. transition yeah. back. I mean, you got to go back. You know, I f even though it's not going back, maybe sometimes it, it teaches you that's how the industry is. One minute you hot, the next minute you not. That's crazy. That's crazy. And it's like you feel like your worth goes down you're like wait a minute no i'm still talented what's going on why can't i get back on again or you know why when we had the number one show made history on tv so yeah that it does kind of take you for a loop but that's when you got to have that inner like okay i'm still worthy and i'm just gonna have to do something else for a second still follow my dreams but if it don't happen hey I mean, I, we still did it. I still succeeded and accomplished so much. And girl, after 20 years, you're still looking good. Well, I be trying, you know what I'm saying? That's that coconut oil. <laughs> you know, I be exfoliating real good. Uh. <laughs> no, but it was a pleasure talking to you. You know, thanks for, you know, being open. I love interviews like this because it helps and inspires others and people need to know, you know. Man, amen to that because it's a tough world. Yes. And I felt... Like a lot of the stars, they cover up stuff, and it's every, always got to be a perfect world. That's what these the public is seeing. And I'm like, no, no, no. It is not a perfect world, and nobody has a perfect life. So if I got to tell my stuff to help some people out there, then it is what it is, and I'm going to do it. Well, thank you for sharing. Thank you. And keep up the good work, girl. I am. I'm, I'm looking radio, Fragile Heart. Y'all better get that on iTunes. I'm telling y'all I'm about to be in your face all day, every day, and that's what it is. Huh? <laughs>